Hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. I'm your host, Sydney Lanham, and today I'm joined by teacher, content creator, and social media strategist, Lucas O'Keefe. For the next half hour or so, he's going to be teaching you about the importance of brand consistency. And right now we are live streaming to you either through YouTube, Behance, or Splash. So wherever you are joining us, please hop in the chat pod, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and what you do. Should you have any questions throughout this webinar, don't be shy. We have moderators monitoring all the chats to ensure your questions get answered. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Lucas. Thank you very much, Sydney. And thank you for everyone who is in the audience joining right now especially if you are tuning in for the second part and you joined us yesterday. Um, as a brief recap, yesterday what we looked at was my quick and effective process for batch creating my social media content and how I really do incorporate all the different goals that are associated with my business um, and also just how I want to grow my account and how my content is really going to and should align with that. So what we're going to look at today, after getting into all the brainstorming and all the planning yesterday, we're going to look at some actual practical tips that you can apply to your content with the main goals being to stand out, to get noticed and to get remembered. And what I'm calling this is our brand consistency across social media. Now, brand consistency is not um, a brand new term. I certainly did not invent it. Um, it is something that we obviously do want to keep as a main priority for our brand. But uniquely on social media, I think it has a special role just because of all the different ways um, our brand or ourself, if it's a personal brand, um, can be noticed on social media. So if you're just tuning in today, um, and you're not familiar with my account, I am mainly on Instagram as my number one platform, um, but also dabbling in other social media platforms as well, especially with so many different overlaps in content creation today. Um, but if we look at Instagram in particular, I have several examples on screen right now of just the many different ways. And this definitely does not cover all the bases, but this is showing just some of the ways that you can be recognized or your brand can be seen on Instagram. So we have some things here um, we have in our posts and I have a few different kinds of posts. Um, I have a carousel oriented post, which I'll definitely be getting into in more detail today. Um, I have an Instagram reel, which if you have been kind of active on Instagram as a content creator in the last few months, you know that this is, you know, for better or for worse, a huge priority that is definitely shaking up content creation right now. Um, and I do have our own kind of classic, typical, just more static um, photo based or quote based post um, that we'll be looking at. Um, and then again, there are the more subtle um, places on Instagram where your brand is going to show up and get noticed that many people don't quite realize is as impactful as it really is. So I have some comments here. Right there, I have my username, I have um, my profile picture, there's my actual profile picture as well. And then also on the various feeds that Instagram is giving us. So we have things like Instagram Live, we have stories, and of course the main feed. So with a wholesome uh, social media strategy where you are not just posting um, content consistently, you're also engaging and building a community or building an audience consistently, you're gonna be showing up in so many more ways than just your content. Like I said, here's a, here's a comment that I maybe left on someone's post. And that is now like a small little billboard advertising for my personal brand that I have put out there where it's going to show up on the notification feed for that person. So just really start thinking of all the different ways that your brand can be represented on social media. And that's why having a consistent identity. So people recognize that it's you right away is so important. So here we do have that really just that unified goal. You can see that everything here is all connected. It all ties back to one common thing, and that is me putting out my personal brand. And the same goes for um, non-personal brands too. So if you are a corporate brand and you have your logo or your spokesperson or your mascot, right? Get that out there, have that connected across the board. The goal is with a time where you know people are not giving tons and tons of attention on each individual post, we do get stuck in those cycles of swipe, swipe, swipe onto the next one. You really want your audience who has followed you, who knows who you are, or also a brand new audience who hasn't been introduced to you yet. And this piece of content could be that first interaction. You really do want those people in the audience to recognize that it's your content right away, to be hooked by it or to be engaged by it. And just to keep on that relationship of interacting with your content and following you. So that's really the main idea that you'll see spread across the various practical examples that I'll be sharing today. So the first one, and again, this is really 
the part that a lot of people overlook. And it is your profile picture, which some people might say uh, they might not even count it as content. Or if I think of you know the various ways you're putting content out there or representing your brand, some people overlook the profile picture because it's often the very first thing we put on our profile and then kind of forget about. But your profile picture is coming out in so many different ways. Like I said, when you leave a comment, when you post, it's going to be right there at the top. When you go live and not even when you're just going live as um, a host or a person speaking, when you're going live as an audience member, and I always tell people this, a great way to get your brand seen and to get recognized is to just join the big industry lives or the lives in your community. And maybe with whatever way you're tuning in and streaming, you're able to comment and get your brand noticed. Maybe you have a noticeable profile picture right there that someone is going to, someone is going to recognize and then connect with on another platform and realize you have the exact same profile picture. Hey, Lucas, I was enjoying your comments on the live stream or on the feed. So um, your profile picture shows up in your comments, your posts, um, the lives you're joining, notifications. So if you're leaving a comment on someone's profile, they're going to see your name, but also your picture um, when they visit your profile. And also on something cool that Instagram and other platforms really are adopting now too, which is suggestions, right? So we really are seeing those recommendations and suggestions. What I mean by this on Instagram is if I follow an account, Right at the bottom, Instagram is going to suggest me up to 30 other accounts that it might think I want to follow. And right there, if you can have a profile picture that is clear what your account is about or who you are and makes you stand out, it is going to get you noticed. And that's another great way to get more traffic to your account. So one thing I love about Adobe Express is how intuitive the background remover tool is. Um, I make all my profile pictures by taking a photo with a high contrast background. Um, so that's just what I start with. And then I just remove the background from it and replace it with something that is associated with my brand colors. And you can see if you've tuned into my presentation yesterday and also today, I use a lot of silvers and blues in my content and just being able to swap in that silver as my background of my profile picture is a great way for people to start recognizing, okay, that's what this guy's brand is all about, or this is what he's doing. Um, and that's just a small, it goes a long, it's a small thing that goes a long way and that overall consistency across the content that I'm sharing. The second example, and um, if you have followed me on Instagram, you know this is one of my favorite ways to share content um, and it is through carousel posts. I love carousel posts because I do really appreciate and enjoy sharing photos on Instagram. I know that has been a big debate between as we look at photos versus videos. Um, photos will always be my prime uh, way to share information on Instagram and social media. Um, and carousel posts have always been the way to do it. And the great, the reason why I love these is because you can fit multiple slides or multiple pages, which is what it is called on Adobe Express. You can share multiple pages of information as you're creating your carousel posts. Maybe it's the teacher in me, but this just feels like an interactive slideshow. And I love to share information like this as opposed to jamming it all on one page or one slide or putting it all down there in the messy caption and expecting people to give me that time to read it. If you're putting it in an interactive post like a carousel, um, you're really gonna see that engagement. And again, with people either prioritizing reels and video or more static content, I always say reels are great for getting reach for your brand because Instagram is pushing them from my, my perspective. Instagram really is, uh, rewarding reels by giving them a lot more reach right now. But in my opinion, no other content format is better than the carousel post for its conversions. And when I say conversions, I mean getting people to share your content, getting people to follow your account or getting people to you know buy your product or service or go visit your podcast or go visit your blog, whatever external traffic you're directing them to. I find carousels are the best for that um, because you're able to include that call to action at the end which I'll get to in just a moment. But if we look at this post in general, going across, um, here are just some samples that I might include in one. And as someone swipes through, they see each page, you can see they're numbered. Right from the start, I have my image on the front cover, right? And all this takes is getting some good lighting in a good part of your house where you have you know, uh, a well-lit part of your house or a nice window, and really doing a few poses of pointing at different things, similar to what people do for YouTube thumbnails, right? Um, the idea is you are putting yourself into your content. And I get this question all the time. People ask me, 
Lucas, do I have to put myself in my content? Like, do I have to have like a face behind my account? And you don't, right? But I do find that with social media being social platforms, it's right there in the word, the more you kind of humanize your brand and the more people realize they're connecting with a person behind the screen, the, the better it's gonna do. And that's why we see such a focus on live streaming, right? And connecting and stories where um, even if it's a huge brand, they're getting people to represent their brand or to have a spokesperson or even just you know giving each employee around the office a chance to be on stories and just putting themselves first and foremost it really does humanize the brand and that is what i like to do with keeping a consistent brand with my content is to put myself into it as much as i can even on the inside slides you can see that i've included my name at the bottom just so as people are swiping they're remembering who it is and also if people were to share this post on Instagram, especially with a carousel post, when you hit share, um, you are basically sharing whatever slide you're viewing at that time. So if we look at this slide two with the microphone, if someone, were, or maybe the one, someone would probably more likely share this one with the tips here. If someone were to share this to their story, that would be the actual post that shows up, not the one with me or not the front cover. So having my name there is again, another way to just tie this content back to me and back to my brand. So that appears all throughout. At the very end there though, this is where I think a lot of people um, forget to include the greatest advantage of a carousel post. And this is what I mentioned with having a really strong call to action potential with this type of content. And the reason why I find carousels so effective, like I said, if everyone is doing that vertical swipe through their feed, onto the next video, onto the next video, onto the next video, it's an up and down pattern of swiping. But what we say about carousels is you're actually including a pattern break and that's what really hooks people in because all of a sudden if someone's swiping up and down and they stop and swipe left and right to go through the different slides or different pages of my post, they're going to be frozen in that moment. And it's much easier to get people connected and engaged with what you're sharing. And that's why at the very end, when the post is done, my last slide is always a call to action. Now, this is where I typically put another picture of myself. It could be your profile picture. It could be the same one. Um, but you want to tie it back to your account, right? If you're just putting text here, people might forget that this is an account that they could potentially follow sharing this information. So I always put a picture of myself and what is very neat about Instagram and people, I get messages about this all the time. People asking me, how do you do that? How do you, how do you include this? But what I do is I actually go and tag myself. So when I'm uploading this post to Instagram, you can even edit it in after if you haven't done it, but what I do is I go to this slide specifically as I'm uploading the post. And when you do the tagging options, it lets you tag that slide. And I tag that picture of myself as my own account. So basically I tag myself in my own content is what I do. And then when people are on this slide, I put the call to action, tap here to visit my profile and follow for more Instagram tips. So I put that, I direct them um, and I tell them what my account is about. And if they tap there and you can go check it out on my account if you wanna see this in action, if they tap there, a little bubble with my name will appear and then they can go right to my account. So it's really just including like a direct link to your own Instagram page. And Lucas, there's a question in the chat, is there a yep. sweet spot with the number of pictures or posts that you put in a carousel? That's, that's an awesome question. I get this all the time. And I used to think like, you know, when you really look into Instagram, like and algorithms and whatnot, it's, it's fun to just like try to explain everything that we'll never actually truly be able to explain. Um, but what I have really shifted to, um, just like with good story, like storytelling has become my focus for most of my content, um, whether it's video or image. Um, and what I've really come down to is use as much as you need to tell what you have to say and nothing more. So there's no like magic number of like, it's gotta be 10 or it's gotta be less. Um, really it's the same as like with a reel or a YouTube video algorithms look for audience retention. Right, So the longer someone is watching my video, if it's 30 seconds and they watch a full 30 seconds, that's great for the algorithm. If it's 30 seconds and they watch five seconds and then go on to the next thing, that's not great, right? That's not saying it's a, it's a piece of content that people are gonna really want to watch, so it's not gonna push it out as much. Same thing with carousel posts. So if it is 10 slides, people are swiping to the first two or three and then swiping up and down to the next, the next post in the feed, that's not gonna look the best. But if it's five slides, and people are hooked and they watch all five, maybe visit my profile, that's gonna send a great signal to the algorithm. And if it's 10 slides and they're staying for that full 10, 
that person is dwelling on my post for a long time. And that's usually going to send a pretty good quality score for my post to the algorithm. So use as much as you need. Um, don't put any filler is what I always say. We're really focusing. When I even look at like my videos, my short form videos, I'm the, the most editing I do is actually in like cutting out those pauses or those breaths or that like dead air, they might call it and really just using only as much time as I need. So to answer the question, I wouldn't say there's like a magic number. Um, you can only use 10 maximum, but uh, just use as much as you need. Yeah. The other cool th yeah. I think that's a great rule of thumb. Yeah, and the other cool thing too is if you use at least two posts, or two, two images, so it's a carousel, Instagram will actually show it on the feed twice. So this is why I really like carousels. Yeah, um, because if someone, so this, this first slide, how to do your first Instagram live. If someone were to be busy or just not interested in it and swipe past it, maybe they go on Instagram like an hour later, there's a very good chance Instagram will show them this second slide on the feed, um, even though they skip past it. Um, so they'll see the, just thinking about going live on Instagram, give you stage fright. And maybe that part is going to resonate with them more. And I have that second chance to really hook them in. So now does that comes, logic yeah. apply if it's like three posts or four, will it then show up three or four times? Unfortunately, I wish. Unfortunately, <laughs> if that were the case, then I would definitely say do 10 slides. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, just twice, but we get those two chances, okay. which is awesome. Yeah. So yeah, again, I started with carousels because you can really just pack in all these different ways um, to have your brand represented and to really engage your audience. I think of them as like mini magazines, which I think um, if you look at this first slide, I even put like the year, I put my, my little initials and I put like page number and name. It's like a magazine for me. It's like a publication. And that's what I love about this format. Awesome. Now on the other side of the coin there, we have reels. Um, so again, the big thing I want to prioritize here is with all the content formats out there, with hearing things like use this format, don't use that format, you shouldn't really apply any of that. It is really about using the format that resonates with you and your content creation style. Um, many people felt like pressured to create Instagram reels or video in general as we're seeing that shift. I did too. And I had to go through like tons of experimentation with my content. Some of it like was like a bit rough because I think my audience was confused with all this new stuff I was sharing. But what I, what I kind of went back to that I'm very happy with. Um, and I think if I flip back and forth, I hope you can kind of see the parallels we have. I'm basically sharing carousel posts as Instagram reels now. And that has become that style that I have now locked in. And again, because it feels at home, because my audience is so used to me sharing carousel posts, I'm really just doing the exact same thing with my Instagram reels. Um, and again, if we look at my brand consistency here, I have my opening visual hook. So when people ask like, again, I'm not comfortable being on video or talking on camera. Um, the go-to thing I say is try to get comfortable being on camera, but you don't have to be on for the entire video. You don't have to even speak. And what I do in this kind of video, so I know this is more of a storyboard. Um, I didn't want to put the full video on there, but if you check out my page, I have tons of content that's just like this, um, but this is actually an, a full on video that I would post as a reel on Instagram. Um, it opens with just me on my couch. I do the same thing. I, sometimes I batch create these if we look at yesterday and I just changed my shirt a bunch of times, right? So it looks like I post, I film them on different days, but I'm, I'm honestly just, just pointing to the title. And that is like a two or three second hook that if someone sees it on the feed, they're gonna say, oh, that's Lucas's post. That's Lucas sitting on the couch, right? And they're going to, and if, if they like my content, that's going to be that hook that might draw them in to watch the rest. Whereas if I were to post any of these other slides first, there's not much identity or really any identity here. Right. But that really is the value. So all the others following slides are giving that value super crucial that I include those, but I always start with just me on camera, even for two, three seconds, as I introduce the topic to hook in my audience and to tell them that it's my post. And that's really what I want to stress the brand consistency on social media in general. The rest is just be putting that information. And again, I have that consistent style of what works for me. I like to share the carousel based um, information that reads like a slideshow. I post these just as a slideshow and I actually animate the icons using um, Adobe Express. You can see the animation on the side here. So when I'm posting those, I love to have them just pop up because again, 
yes, I treat it like a carousel, but I still know that it is video. So I want those popping up and animated elements really coming to the forefront. Um, and I also use the Reels text, um, just like you would see here that is um, built into Instagram to add my on-screen text as well. So everything else is icons, which might feel very general, but because I hooked it in with myself in the beginning, and you might even wanna add yourself at the end. So here I don't add myself, I just put an icon, but if you wanna kind of have it go full circle, maybe you're putting yourself back on screen just for a split second and saying, follow for more, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's just about framing or opening with yourself as the main kind of identity of the brand. So people can, first of all, recognize that identity, but as you continue to regularly post and show up, they're remembering that it's you who keeps showing up. From there, um, I do like to share just um, what I think is a very simple but effective way to share content. Um, and this is, in my mind, a classic that has been around um, Instagram for so long, um, and it's branded quotes. And if you actually look here, um, I've more or less copied the style of what a Twitter tweet might look like. So I just created this um, template in Adobe Express by just um, trying to find the correct font that Twitter uses. Um, if I were to like screenshot a tweet, I put my profile picture in there, but because I've put my name there on the top, because I put my profile picture, um, in there, I'm turning it from just a quote or also just, you know, a blank screen with black text. I'm turning it into a branded piece of content. So I am represented in this. And the, re the reason why I like to share this content um, is because they are so great and effective for shares. So typically, you know, someone might share um, a, a carousel, but it does take a bit more time to swipe through. If a reel is on the long end, people might not share it unless it's like super quick and relatable. But with something like this, where it's just a single screen, a single image um, with text that someone can visually read. It also, like I said, it looks very familiar because a lot of people um, are used to that kind of Twitter style. Um, it's easy to share, but if I weren't to include my name, my profile picture, the, it's very likely those shares aren't really um, spreading my identity or getting my brand recognized. It's more or less just, you know, words that someone is sharing. So I like just this simple thing. I, it's very, in my opinion, non-invasive in terms of like um, taking over or dominating the content. It is just a small little um, identity tag that I've put up at the top that people can then associate with my account. Um, again, same thing. If you want to tag yourself in the post, tap on that profile picture, tag yourself right there. And like I said, if someone is seeing the post and they say, I want to check out more about this account. If they tap on the post, your, your, um, your account's going to show up there and someone can then click on it or tap on it and go right to your page. So it's really just about including all the, all the different channels and avenues that link back to your account as are possible. As we kind of, so those are my four, um, in my opinion, favorite ways to be represented um, in your content and just to have that consistent identity that people are going to notice. Um, but I do have some bonus tips that I do like to share um, as we are kind of just thinking about, you know, I've done all that or I've experimented with the others. I know what kind of content that I've locked in. Um, here are just some other brief considerations that you might wanna look at in terms of how people remember your brand or how your brand is going to stand out. And I mentioned this at the beginning when I was looking at the profile picture and kind of, you know, Taking, a, taking away the background of a regular photo and putting in um, the right colors that match my brand for that profile picture. But having, a, having consistent brand colors really does add an extra level of recognition to your content. And the great thing about Adobe Express is you can save those colors and kind of have your own custom palette. So again, I have my background here. Yesterday I had my silver background. I was able to just quickly swap back and forth and it saves me tons of time, especially when I'm batch creating content to just kind of um, make sure my content matches what my brand is all about. Secondly, you can also use templates um, or even create your own templates, right? So when I started, I was using templates and really just um, evolving those or being inspired by those. And eventually it kind of came to be my own template that I had just modified to match my brand colors, maybe my brand fonts that I like to use. Um, but the more templates you have, first of all, it speeds up content creation but something I like to stress about templates even more than speeding up content creation is that it gives you a uniform look. So if I'm trying to invent something brand new every single day, um, it might be confusing to my audience, right? They're not gonna recognize this is Lucas's post or this is so-and-so's post. So the more consistently um, I'm using that same look to my content, 
maybe obviously swapping out the image, changing out the title, changing out the actual content itself, but using that uniform look is really gonna get you recognized. Same thing as we kind of move on to the third tip. Um, in addition to having that profile picture that you're gonna use on Instagram, for example, if you look at all of the, most of my social media presences, so most of my social media accounts, um, I use pretty much the same profile picture across the board. So whether you're communicating with me, even through like my email, uh, my profile picture is the same. My YouTube, my profile picture is the same. Um, Twitter, it's the same. Instagram, it's the same. And the idea is if people want to find you across all the different platforms, they can. And then lastly, um, in addition to just putting those brand colors and templates to your uh, content, like checklists, infographics, and carousels, when you upload an Instagram reel, or even when you post an Instagram live, there's an option to create and share your own cover photos. So you can always, you can always like take a still from the video and use that. I personally like to make it a little bit more professional by designing um, a cover photo first. You just use the typical Instagram story um, dimensions, which are um, a default on Adobe Express, and you just add in your colors. Um, I like to actually use a lot of the story templates and just kind of modify them for Reels um, or IG Live cover photos. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Lucas. This is unfortunately our time together today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. If you liked the content that Lucas went over today or in yesterday's session, please follow him on Instagram. Um, Cody will drop in the Instagram links if she has not already. Otherwise, have a nice rest of your day. And thank you, Lucas. Thanks, everybody. All right, bye.